Gemini 3 was launched on March 23, 1965 at 2.24 p.m. UTC from Launch Complex 19 at Cape Canaveral. Its goal was to test the Gemini spacecraft for the first time with two astronauts on board, Gus Grissom and John Young. Grissom was a Mercury veteran and became on this flight the second person to go to space twice. The first was Joseph A. Walker, who did so on two X-15 flights in 1963. Grissom's first trip to space had been suborbital on Mercury Redstone 4, and sensing that the chances he would get at an orbital Mercury flight were unlikely, he opted instead to get into the Gemini program early on. As a result, Gemini was largely designed to fit him, which made it a bit of a squeeze for the larger astronauts as Grissom was the shortest of the Mercury 7 at around 5 feet 5 inches. While the capsule was a development on Mercury and superficially looked like it without its service module, it was a vastly different craft and designed for much more hands-on interaction from the astronauts. It was the first spacecraft that could change its orbit instead of just reorienting, an ability that this mission was able to demonstrate, and the first that used a lifting re-entry to control where it would land. This mission was famous for some antics from its crew, the Mercury spacecraft had been named by the astronauts, and Grissom continued the tradition by naming Gemini 3 Molly Brown, a reference to the unsinkable Molly Brown, a movie about a woman who survived the Titanic, which was in turn a reference to the fact that Grissom's Mercury capsule had sunk, and he intended to avoid that with Gemini 3. NASA management didn't appreciate the humor, but decided to put up with it when Grissom suggested Titanic as an alternative. The naming privilege was denied to later Gemini crews, though. Probably the most remembered aspect of the mission was that John Young smuggled a corned beef sandwich on board, which he offered to Grissom with a characteristic deadpan expression in the middle of the three-orbit flight. They quickly found it wasn't safe to eat it because of the crumbs floating everywhere and the smell overwhelming the air systems, so they put it away. Grissom considered it a highlight of the mission, but management was again displeased. In this case, management had a good reason to be upset, as they, led by NASA Administrator James Webb, were called before Congress and questioned about the breach of protocol and astronaut discipline. Other than that, the Gemini spacecraft performed admirably on what was a relatively short mission. There was a bit of a yaw drift due to water venting during orbit, but that had been the only issue in orbit. It splashed down short of the mark because its lift was different from what wind tunnels had predicted. Young would continue in the Gemini program before going on to Apollo, but Grissom went straight to Apollo to get in on the ground floor there. But Apollo was a parallel development that wasn't building on Mercury and Gemini. And while Grissom had been enthusiastic about Gemini, he found Apollo riddled with problems. Ultimately, the flawed Apollo 1 spacecraft would claim his life in a pre-launch test. This mission, though, was the first of 10 crewed Gemini missions, which had dangerous moments, but far more successes. Thank you for watching this mission profile of Gemini 3.